Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are when you are watching this. My name is Jenna Martin. I am the Director of Special Populations at Family Connection of South Carolina, which is also our state's Parent Training and Information Center. And we are going to talk about maintaining connections through prevention, well being, and support. I am going to share with you this disclaimer slide from the OSEP Leadership and Project Directors Conference Committee that the contents of this presentation were developed by me for this conference. So the contents do not necessarily represent the policy of the Department of Education, and you should not assume endorsement by the federal government. So let's get started. We are first going to define collaboration because we know it means many different things to many different people. And on this slide is an image of two gears. Um, one is yellow, it says strategic, one is partnership, and it is in a gray metal color. And the gears are grinding together um, to work in collaboration. So the term strategic part partnership can mean, as I said earlier, many different things to different people. So for the purpose of this presentation, um, we are going to define it as a formal relationship between two or more organizations that have three features. The first one um, that I'd like to share with you is that in a strategic partnership is intended to create value for the organizations in some way. So for example, that can mean raising revenue or lowering costs. It can mean generating new ideas and innovations that come from that. The work is also done together. It's managed um, by side, each side to varying degrees. So it's not just one side that makes all the rules or dictates um, how the project or service will go. It's done together. And the risk and the rewards of the joint venture are shared in a strategic partnership. Maybe not necessarily equally, but both sides will get something out of it. So by definition, partnership is a two-way street. And when we have a partnership, it enables us to collaborate, to be innovative, to share knowledge and grow and optimize the use of the resources, skills, and networks that we have. So how do we identify a strategic partnership? When you're thinking of collaborating or um, networking to build a partnership, these are some helpful things that can help you um, when you're strategizing. So first you want to identify those potential partners and you want to determine the benefits of the partnership for both ways. You want to meet with those potential partners and um, communicate and build some rapport and then decide the roles and responsibilities of each side. And then you want to develop an action plan to leverage the resources. So this next slide entitled Our Story, I'm gonna talk to you about why we decided as um, one of the newer, a newer PTI for our state a few years ago, that we decided to partner with the South Carolina Department of Social Services or DSS. We knew early on that as a new PTI, we would not be able to meet all of the needs of our families alone and that we would need to develop successful um, partnerships um, in order for us to provide the services um, that we knew that our families um, were in desperate need of. So we had to figure out how to get access to the parents of families of our special populations like um, our children in foster care and their families which is what this presentation will focus on today. Although we do know that special populations do encompass other um, population subsets uh, under IDEA. So um, we knew, like I said, that we needed um, to outreach and to network to be able to um, provide these services in a meaningful way and to give um, access to families. We identified as our work progressed um, that there were huge gaps in services for children and youth in care and um, there was a lack of understanding of how to um, navigate the educational system. We had previously been training 
for a few years foster parents throughout our state. But as our work grew, as our referrals grew, and um, taking into consideration the research that um, shows a significant gap in educational outcomes in highly mobile populations, such as children in the child welfare system and those who have experienced abuse and neglect. And knowing that 40%, um, that they are 40% more likely to have special education need than their peers, um, we knew that reaching out to the Department of Social Services to attempt to provide, to create a strategic partnership would be beneficial. So what do we have to offer them? Well, we are the PTI for the state, um, which gives us the um, expertise and knowledge uh, to be able to not only train um, foster families and kinship families and adoptive families, but also to train um, DSS staff, which ended up being a significant need um, and one that they were very receptive to. Um, we also have staff um, such as myself who have the shared lived experience of working within the child welfare system. Um, so that gave us the ability to connect um, with not only families, but with caseworkers as well. And um, we developed a strong relationship with them. Um, we knew communication, building rapport is key um, with any um, family serving organization. We know that, but also um, knowing that in order to be successful, that we had to gain the trust of staff so that we could um, help them um, help families as well. And so some examples of that were, um, I began hosting twice a month calls with the child well-being teams in our state. They're divided into four regions, similar to how we are set up. Um, we provided staff trainings. Um, we began with basic staff trainings and then um, took a deeper dive into um, more um, of the expert type topics. We um, provided technical assistance. I would attend state level staffings and provide um, recommendations for education services or support. And so that continued to not um, only grow our partnership, but it also grew um, our referrals as well. And this next slide um, says one experience can impact many. And so we just talked about why partnering with South Carolina DSS and I want to share a personal story as a parent um, of a child uh, who was uh, in the child welfare system as a parent with lived experience um, that on the screen is uh, my son, Dakota, who's about six at the time. He's wearing glasses, a green hearing aid. He's missing his two front teeth and he's wearing a little bow tie. And he's holding a sign that says 1,124 days in foster care five schools, five different places, and then one forever home on the date that he was adopted. But what you don't see is that when Dakota and his brother came to live with us, Dakota had several behavioral diagnoses um, on his intake form that came with him. Um, but we quickly learned there was more to the story. So he was four years old. Uh, he had about 30% intelligible speech. So that means to people that did not know him, um, you could only understand 30% of what he was saying. So you can imagine the maladaptive skills that were formed um, in the early years of him trying to communicate. Uh, we came to learn that he has unilateral hearing loss, which um, he is completely deaf in his left ear. And when you have unilateral hearing loss, you do not know which direction that hearing is coming from. So he would spin around and look all over the place, um, trying to find where that sound would come from. He actually has two vision impairments uh, that makes it, um, in order for him to look you in the eye, he has to actually raise his head up, which you can imagine at four, he didn't want to do all the time. Um, and he wasn't able to express himself. And of course had some um, residual trauma from being um, in several different places in such short amount of time in his little life. So 
as you can imagine, um, behavioral challenges, we're getting him, uh, you know, um, assessed for things, we're getting different evaluations. Um, he's in a self-contained class at this point. So despite touching multiple systems of care, multiple um, providers and different systems, none of these things were um, picked up on um, or um, there were no interventions made. So you can imagine um, just, I remember one year, one of his IEPs had his uh, individualized education plan had 27 speech goals one year um, because he had no early intervention. He was four when he came to live with us. And so he did not have speech. He did not have occupational therapy for his sensory processing disorder. He did not have his glasses or his hearing aids. So he looked and acted um, stubborn or defiant, which was uh, an incorrect diagnosis that he did have. Um, and it was not potty trained at the time because of the sensory issues. Uh, so he is one of the reasons or the reason why um, I put my faith in to this work and knowing that his experience um, can hopefully impact many others uh, in a positive way that, that don't have to miss out on the education supports um, that they so need and deserve. Um, in those early years. So um, thankfully, fast forward now to this little guy on the screen is now um, turning 13 in a few weeks and is uh, completely in general gen ed classroom um, setting. He is an advanced placement math and science and um, will graduate with a diploma, um, which is not at all uh, what we were told at the beginning of his journey. And so I wanna talk about impact and kind of wrap up um, some takeaways. So uh, the South Carolina Department of Social Services um, and Family Connection formed a strategic partnership. And out of that came the opportunity to train um, foster parents, kinship providers, adoptive parents, um, biological parents, um, and our Department of Social Services staff we are able to bring the parent voice into policy making, such as um, the story that I just told you um, about Dakota was able to share to bring um, light into the kind of disjointed and missed um, opportunities that we can um, definitely impact having um, someone um, closely looking at those educational plans and those referrals we were able to develop um, parent-friendly education materials for staff and for families and provide ongoing technical assistance to our child well-being staff in the forms of um, those monthly calls that I talked about, um, as far as um, myself being their um, point of contact, giving them streamlined communication and direct access to one appointed staff person, attending their state level staffings to provide educational um, recommendations and consult. And um, what that has done is just create a partnership that has uh, unique value. Um, we work well together. Um, we share in the returns fairly for seeing the um, extraordinary um, outcomes that we know can be so negative for children in the child welfare system, but we see um, decreased suspension and expulsions. We've seen increased um, numbers of permanency because when you have educational stability at school, there's less disruptive placements at home, which is um, a huge outcome because um, we know these children tend to move around a lot and that has uh, negative um, consequences as well. So um, if you're wondering how um, just in a quick bullet point list of how to do this or what we did, I'll just tell you um, quickly that the way that we um, outreached the Department of Social Services was by meeting with their state director um, approximately three times. We wanted to establish a relationship, make sure he was new to the agency in the state as well, make sure that um, he and his staff knew um, what we did and what we were um, hoping to do for 
um, at-risk families in our state. Um, we presented to and trained foster parents um, once a month at no cost. And then we began presenting to DSS staff and attending their meetings. Um, we then sent in a proposal and met with the key staff to go over that proposal and um, make sure that um, our well-intended um, outline was going to um, meet the needs of the families and children and youth in care and the staff as well. And then we developed the contract. And so um, after doing that, you know, just I would say making sure that you do your research. We knew that this population um, had a significant risk for um, negative educational outcomes and we wanted to find a way to help um, positively impact their outcomes. Uh, we wrote up a proposal with the budget and then asked for a meeting with the director um, and his chief of staff, and then asked for an in-person meeting to discuss the benefits of the proposal once it was reviewed um, to continue negotiation. So um, I hope that gives you insight into um, how um, planning and uh, purposeful and um, having you know intent to your proposal for a strategic partnership with the agency in your state, um, how you can go about that and how you can reap the benefits um, that our families and staff um, here in South Carolina um, are seeing as far as education outcomes for at-risk children in the child welfare system. Thank you again. And if you have any questions or want to reach out, um, please do so. Again, I'm Jenna Martin with Family Connection at um, South Carolina, and I would um, love to speak with you. Thank you.